Welcome to the Jericho Force Podcast, where we learn how to integrate faith into the work that we do. Don't conform to the world's way of doing business. Transform by doing business God's way. Here's our host, my husband, author, speaker, teacher, encourager, and stewardship coach, Jason Davis. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Jason Davis, a.k.a. Mr. Fortify, and welcome to the Jericho Force podcast, where we talk about integrating faith into the work that we do. I am really excited about this episode. If Listen, if you are all about education, you do not want to miss this conversation. I've got a dynamic guest. She is a powerhouse. But before I bring her on... Let me introduce her to you. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Lori Genevish, president and founder of My Ideal College. As a sought-out speaker and educational consultant, Lori teaches teens and college students how to go from doubt to destiny as it relates to their future. Couple this with her passion for saving parents their time, money, and sanity in the process. Lori is on a mission to make the term student debt a thing of the past. So many adults have student debt and they aren't even in the career that brought on that debt. Furthermore, many college graduates are not earning enough money to meet their student loan obligations, much less live on their own and provide for themselves. Spending more than 20 years in the corporate arena, Lori has used assessment technology for many years to help coach and hire, develop, and retain employees and jobs that they love. These companies include Penske, Freshie, Marlin Leasing, and Heat Tech. Now she wants to use it to help young adults plan for their future. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jericho Force podcast, Miss Lori Genevish. Lori, how are you doing? Great, doing great. I was like, oh, that's long. <laughs> <laughs> no, all good. It just means you're a baller. That's all. It just means it just means that you're a VIP, very important person. Well, Lori, it's well. A, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, Lori, it's an honor to have you on, and it this conversation is going to be. Uh, key for many reasons. I mean, Lori, you look at the times that we're living in. You know, we're just. You know, we had the, the pandemic, we had economic uncertainty, the racial and social injustice. And then in the middle of all that, Lori, this big student debt, student yeah. loan crisis and people kind of reevaluating their their purpose in life, their passion, their their learning journey. So I think this is going to be an awesome conversation. Yeah, you know, college planning is nothing like when we had to do it. It's just, as I tell people, the good news is there are a lot of options. The bad news is, is there are a lot of options. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Lori. Good news and the bad news. There's a lot of exactly. options. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of options, Lori, the, the work that you do with students and their families today is outstanding. But we know that there was a journey that you took to get here. We heard some of it in your bio. But, Lori, take us on that journey. Walk us through what brought you to what you're doing today. Yeah, so I, I love telling this story because it really is, you know, your path leads you. And so um, met, oh, so many years ago when I was in high school, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to college because that was the only option, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that used to be your at least perceived option. And I was savvy enough to go, okay, well, wherever I go to college, you better have a a degree into a job that I'm really going to love. Of course, then at you know, 15, 16 years old, well, what do I, what, what kind of job would I love? You know? So I was like, well, you know what? I love the water. Mm. And if I could have a job that was happy in the water, but made good money. So I'm going to live on my own. Um, what would that be? Mm. So those two criteria, I decided marine biologist. Mm. That's what I want to do. 
and I actually went to University of North Carolina Wilmington uh, that specialized in marine biology. And I was so excited. I thought, oh, my path is set. I'm going to be swimming with the fishes all day. This is awesome. I cannot wait for my life. And I'm in school taking the classes, and I'm taking the classes, and then, huh, there's a lot of math involved for a marine biology degree. I hate math more than I love the water. Mm. I'm not willing to do this. So what did I do? Like most students, I changed my major. I changed it to communications. I had no idea what I was going to do with that degree. Um, But all I knew was it didn't involve more math, and I could probably get a decent job with a communications degree. And then um, while I was in college, I got involved in fundraising activities. And I'm like, that's my path, fundraising. I'm going to, you know, because I'm still cause motivated, right? I feel this need to serve, and that's the way to serve. And so I actually did it for four years after college. I did it two years at North Carolina State University. Hmm. And after two years, I didn't love it, but I thought it's them, not me. Hmm. You know, it's just not the right environment. So then I went to the March of Dimes, and I did it for there, two, for there for two years. And I realized, oh, I hate fundraising. I mean, I I literally would come home every day to my parents' house because fundraiser didn't make a lot of money. I mean, literally crying because I just didn't make a lot of money, worked tons of hours. Like, I, I just, I was 24 years old going, what am I doing? You know, this is not the life I wanted for myself. And how, do, how am I going to get myself out of this? And uh, my dad actually said, he said, I want you to go see a career counselor. And I thought, why not? Because at this point, I'm destined to work at the mall. And that's not what I want for myself. And in working with that career coach, we identified that I would love a career in training development. Mm. It was that need to serve but without all the other stuff fundraising had and i tell you when you find your purpose things open up within two months i had a job as a branch trainer at kinko's when it used to be kinko's i loved my job so much i got promoted left and right i actually got promoted to the corporate office at kinko's in california and I, as you, in my bio, I led the learning development for organizations because I love my job so much. Mm-hmm. And um, so uh, fast forward, you know, uh, about uh, 10 years ago when my kids were young, I was like, okay, I love learning development, but I want flexibility because I have young kids. So that's when I started, uh, I left corporate life, I did consulting. So I could have the flexibility and the assessment I use of corporate corporate to help them hire, develop, develop and train talent has a really robust career piece. Mm. And I'm like, there's a way to help kids. And I've always had a passion to help kids, but I wasn't sure how I knew it wasn't being a teacher. And I found out, uh, that in Australia, the Harris assessment is the preferred career assessment mm. uh, for all teens and get guidance. So uh, hence my ideal college was born because, you know, really helping. And as a mom of two boys, I was like, one, I felt this need to student debt is so obnoxious and not needed. And how do we, how do we stop it? So that, you know, that it, it's funny how past, you know, what the, the advice my dad gave me now correlates into the business I have now. Wow. Lori, that was huge. I was, I was making notes as you were telling your story. Number one, just a history of ser- serving, <clears throat> not just in what you were doing, but even just your attitude and your posture, just wanting to serve. So that really stood out and then and then we get to the part about the career counselor but i don't want people to overlook this lori the role that your dad played and 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 when kids are trying to you know make a decision on what college or university they want to go to it's kind of that first 
you know, big boy, big girl decision. And so uh, people, as you're listening, know the role that you play. And that decision yeah. as a parent is is huge. So I didn't want people mm-hmm. to miss that. And then the just the the last part, Lori, just about how you know God works. He's working through uh, our life, and it's like it might have looked a little bit different. And I'm not sure how having a heart to serve and kinkos, and I don't know how all this yeah. and, and consulting. I have no idea. Many times, Lori, I've found. Even in my own life, it's like this hodgepodge, and then all of a sudden we get there, and we're just right in our zone of genius. So I, yeah. I, I picked all of that up from your story. Absolutely love it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Lori, along the way, we, we were starting to get there. Um, there's many turning points that I'm sure mm-hmm. that you had. Uh, when you think about uh, – the role that faith played in that, what was one of those significant turning points in your life uh, where God really was leading, guiding, and, and directing you? Um, you know, honestly, uh, I talked about, I, I, I moved out to the corporate office in California. So uh, I, um, had lived in North Carolina and near my parents my entire life. I was the baby of the family, mm-hmm. you know, and um, I had this opportunity, you know, I, I, I was given this opportunity to, to by myself, move out, go from the East Coast to the West Coast mm-hmm. and at 26 years old. And it was a big decision for me, mm. you know, because I've been so used to having family around and I would really have to just sort of, you know, learn how to do everything on my own. It's not like I could call mom and dad or I had to make new, I would have to make new friends and all that. And I really thought hard about it. You know, it's like, is this the right decision for me? Mm. And I just, you know, I went with my faith and said, I need to take this leap. You know, it's like something just told me it was the right thing for me. And it, it really was. I, I learned how to you know, be an adult, right? You yeah. know, it really, I really sort of grew up, you mm. know, because I had to rely on myself. And which is a, a great thing. And I think it's sort of also why now I'm an entrepreneur, right? Because I want to trust myself and, 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 you know, be able to, you know, do, yeah. So that, that would say that was just such a really key time in my life. And just to go, you got to trust and know that it's going to work out. And in the back of my mind, like, look, it's just one plane ticket back. If I just, <laughs> <laughs> like hey mom and dad uh still one phone call away right <laughs> well i have to share it's sort of funny but I, I when i look when i as i was leaving i said to dad i said i said mom's taking this awfully well you know <laughs> like like she, he's like she keeps telling herself you'll be back in a year <laughs> oh wow jeez <laughs> Oh, meanwhile, meanwhile, I was actually out there for four years and met the man I was, I'm, I'm now married to. So wow. it all, yeah. So it, it was, it was a, a great, uh, yeah, it was good that I believed in faith and just believe. Wow. Look at that, Lori, a step of faith. Uh, overcoming the discomfort and you come back and you're married, you got life experience. <laughs> Mom's probably like, huh, okay, all right. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Absolutely love I love that, Lori, my goodness. Well Lori, as we as we start getting into your expertise, we you know, we talked about you uh, working for Kinko's and then you're doing consulting and then 
All of a sudden, passion meets the purpose, and here we go, My Ideal College. Talk to us about what My Ideal College is and how you serve uh, students and their families. Yeah, so My Ideal College, we're we're a full-service career and educational consulting firm. And so uh, one of the ways we serve is we work with high school and even college students for those that have no idea what they want to do. Mm. Um, where, or, you know, maybe they think they want to do something, but they're not sure or that type of thing. Because we help them get clear on what careers, we, through the assessment we use, we're able to match their natural interests, like like interests and behaviors that they may not even realize they have mm. or, or articulate them and match them to actual jobs. Mm. And um, so we take this from, from I have no idea what I want to do to, you know, very specific job titles. Or I was actually talking with a mom today. She's like, you know, her son probably wants to do something in the arts. Okay. There's, It's not just the painting, the drawing, the acting. You could sell, you mm-hmm. know, you could, uh, there's just so, it's like when someone says, well, I want to work with computers. Like, well, you could sell them, you could code them, you could design video games, you could, you know, do testing, you know, those. So we really help narrow that down. Mm-hmm. Um. And not only just narrow that down, then we teach them, you know, uh, let's take a look at what's the job outlook and salary of those careers. Mm. You know, just because the assessment says, you know, this would be a good job, let's make sure the job's going to be out there in the future. Mm. Um, I was working with a teen, and she was so excited because she scored high as a sketch artist. And she's like, oh. I, a job that has to be like me in the water. Mm-hmm. Oh, a job that has me drawing all day is going to be great. Until she saw the salary, she said, "Huh, I have to have two jobs in order to support myself." And I'm like, "Yeah, and you could do that." You know, she's like, "No, I just want one job." Um, on the flip side, I was working with a teen, and he scored high. It was some engineering job, and like starting salary was six figures, mm-hmm. and he's like. Oh my goodness, four years of college, six figure job, I'm in. <laughs> and when we looked at the job, he realized he would have to have his doctorate to have oh, that job. Oh, wow. And he's like, no, I just want to go to school four years. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, okay, great. Let's look at another job and know that this is not, this could be something you could look at in the future. You know, should you want to change career paths? Because it's not about, kids have to figure out what they want to do the rest of their life. It's what's going to get them on that first good career path. Mm. And what's the gap to get there. If it's college, what major, it could be trade school. It could be, I've worked with some teams. They end up doing certifications Mm. and the parents are thrilled to death. Mm. Um, So that goes back to all the different options. And not only do we then help them with, you know, identifying those careers we also teach them how to network with people in those Mm. careers because we as adults know networking is still key to anything Mm -hmm. and um in fact research show research has shown that two-thirds of college graduates struggle to launch their careers Mm. the one-third that don't struggle know their major going in know the career they want to have at least one internship well, how do you get internships? By networking. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then we also teach them um, uh, social media. And not okay. just what you shouldn't put on social media, but what should you be posting to stand out in the scholarship, college application, job interview process. Um, so that's the career piece. And then once they've identified what they want, or there are those kids that have known since they were four years old. They were going to be an accountant. Mm-hmm. You know, knew that was right back. Um, I we do what you typically go to a college consultant for, where let let's find you. Tell me what kind of colleges you're looking at. What you know? What do you want? Small classes, large classes, location. Give us some financials. We'll put a college book together for you. 
go over those colleges. We also help with the essay writing and make sure the teens, you know, get all the college applications in at, at the right time. So, mm. you know, we really sort of help be that guy because, you know, God bless. And I, of course, you know, when we were teens too, we didn't always listen to our parents, but we listen to someone else. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So that that's what we do is we first help them find what is what is that career that's going to light them up, find them their purpose, and then what then let's get them let's help them cross that finish line to get there. Mm, so good, Lori. I, listen, I I know I'm long graduated from from college, but my goodness, that would have been a, an awesome you would have been an awesome person to talk to at the time. And there's many many more people that need this type of help. Uh, you know, uh, Lori, as we're coming out of the pandemic, in your opinion, uh, there's been a lot of, as you know, a lot of things written and, and, and media about what's happening with the, the rising costs of education and then people just having different opinions on how and what education should and shouldn't be. So mm-hmm. as we kind of come into, you know, kind of hit the reset button kind of in every industry, but what would you say are some trends that you're seeing uh, in, in education that parents and students should be aware of? Well, I think, I think parents are starting to realize um, it's, you know, you you don't just have to go to a big name school, Mm. right? You know, that there are lots of different ways to get your education there. You know, there are a lot of great schools out there that people don't even know about where you can get the same education as some of the the more expensive schools. Mm. Um, So I think, you know, because of the concern of college debt that I think parents are rightfully so being more open to look at opportunities. And also not only that, you know, and I see education, you know, certain, there's a growing, um, there's a, a growing, uh, I can't think of the word, but, you know, certifications, right? Mm. Um, like Google does certi- certifications mm-hmm. and they have become very popular. I remember when I first heard about them a couple of years ago, people were like, oh, Google's just trying to make money, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, if it's a way for a kid to get in the door to Google and they have good people skills, why not? Yeah. You know, um, you know, other companies have talked about, you know, that actually companies are um, starting to look at, do we really need someone to have a college degree to have this job? Mm. You know, um, because they actually found in some ways it was limiting their talent pool. Okay. Um, and so, uh, you know, I mean, definitely for some things you do want a college degree, you know, and, and, uh, but, you know, not necessarily everything. And I I do think because, because like you said, it's become such a hot topic that Mm -hmm. I, I think, I think, I think education will, will become more certificate based versus, that you know um there was a teen um i i I heard about one of my friends she said her nephew wanted to be an audio visual work and you don't need a college degree for that but the parents and i and i get it believe me parents said you know well that's great but have a college degree because you have to in order to succeed you have to have a college degree and that's not the case well he did go to college um, he ended up dropping out a year and a half later, mm. not because of audio visual. It was all, it just wasn't the right fit for him. Right. And so then he did end up transferring to a technical college and that's great. You know, you think, you know, uh, everything worked out Well, because of that year and a half, uh, year and a half in college, they're $80,000 in debt. Oh man. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's just, uh, I, I think it will be changing more and more. You know, I mean, we got to remember colleges are a business. Mm-hmm. They're, they're in it to make money. You know, right. they make money. 
kids are starting to apply to more schools, well, they get all that money, that application fee money. Yeah. You know, so it just, uh, I think I went on a little bit of a tangent. I can't no, your not at all. This is yeah. good. It's good stuff. It's a hot Lori. topic for me. <laughs> Give it to us, Lori. Give it to us. <laughs> You had me think. You had me thinking, uh, Lori, with all of the the you know, let's call it competition. You know, there that you've got, you know, trade schools and certifications kind of putting pressure on mm-hmm. some of those uh, traditional uh, colleges and, and and universities. So when you're working with parents and and the students. What is that conversation like? Like you mentioned the one parent, no, you need to go get your degree. And then, whoa, 80 grand, here we go. What has that conversation been like when you sit down with the students and the parents and go, okay, so here's the pros and cons based on your uh, area of of interest and the jobs available, the pathway to get there. Here's what this looks like. Is are those difficult conversations to have with people, parents that are just so gun ho with no, I want my son or daughter to. You know. you know what? Honestly, I won't take clients unless they're open to the possibilities. Mm. Um, if they're if they're in it for me to help make sure their team takes a certain path, I'm I'm like I'm not your right person. Mm. You know, it because it's it's about what's in them that's going to get them to that right path. I, I actually, I had a, I was talking with a dad at one point and he's like, I I want my son to get into Georgia tech, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm focused on Georgia tech. And I said, I get it. Georgia tech's a great school. Mm -hmm. What is he going to major in? I don't know. I don't care. He'll figure it out. Once he gets there, his friends will help him. (laughs) And I'm like, huh, would I want an 18 year old serving as my kid's college counselor or a career counselor? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and the, the team was a senior and I thought, you know what? I, I appreciate your efforts. I'm not the right fit for you. Mm. And I'll never forget this because it was Thanksgiving day. I got an email from the dad saying my kid didn't get into Georgia tech. What do we do? And I'm like, uh, you know, I thought I felt bad for the dad, but I felt worse for the team. Mm. Here he is a senior year with no plans. Wow. All because the eggs were put in one basket instead of really looking at the long term goal mm. and the long term and how to get there. My goodness. Mm. Yeah. Gosh, getting uh, and and being a you know, Lori, I am a proud alumni of of Georgia Tech, Georgia Institute yeah. of Technology. My wife and I. So that's just so funny that she used <laughs> that. So shout out to Georgia Tech. But you're right. Um, people get fixated on you know one one school, and it's like you know, you know there's uh, there's so many opportunities to arrive at a similar destination. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, with the school you, you want to look at, you know, the first criteria would be, does it have the major that's going to get you the career you want? You mm-hmm. know, the, and, and second, what are the internship, like how, how much do they help you find internship opportunities? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, for your, not just overall as a school, but for your particular goal. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, you know, what's the hiring rate, you know, like what companies do hire out of that school as well. And there's a lot of great small schools out there that people, you know, do pull pull people out of, so, you know, and get jobs. That is a perfect transition, Lori. You opened up the floodgates, the show me the money, right? (laughs) So we know that we know that's kind of on two spectrums, Lori. So, you know, you look at the, now the internships and, and, and co-ops and uh, what's possible in that career uh, and being concerned about student debt, Lori, what's the conversation about uh, tuition, scholarships and grants? Is there what type of guidance do you give to the parents and students on that front? Yeah, so we actually will do the research. So mm-hmm. we'll actually be like, all right. 
like here's here's some schools based on on you know what you want to pay um you know right fit all the all the other stuff that comes with finding the right college um and then we actually will say you know here's some scholarship opportunities you know some you may get because you live in a different state or you know i mean that's what they they're trying to sell you in it could be that you know family i can't tell you how many parents will say god if i had known if my kid had only gotten one point higher on their sat we could have gotten a scholarship like i would have had them take it again you know to try to get that one point um so we and you know so we actually will lay out for you here's all your possibilities um and also let you know like okay these types are these types of scholarships are competitive. They're not a given. These are some givens just based on your thing. So we, we, we field all that for you because it's, you know, there's no consistency in these colleges and their websites and, and, and where to find the information. Not only that, some of these websites, they put pricing for, they still have pricing from two years ago on their oh, website. Jeez, my goodness. You know, so unless you have time for another full-time job, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to hopefully figure out all this information, it really does help to have someone who knows how to find the right things and ask the right questions. Mm. So, Lori, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're telling the parents and the students, hey, help me help you. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> help me help you. The uh, last thing I wanted to touch on before, before we talk about uh, things you're excited for coming up on this school year, Lori, you mentioned yeah. uh, the power of assessments. Uh, so talk to us about mm-hmm. the assessment. You, you kind of laid some things out there. Uh, what is that process like when you're doing the assessment with the students? And what, is, what has been some of the eye-opener uh, stories that you've seen where maybe a kid was like, wow, I didn't even know that that was in me, or maybe it was a shocker to the parent. So give us some, some details about how, what the assessment process is like. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an assessment junkie. I love assessments. <laughs> no, um, and because, and to me, and because from my own personal experience, like how else are you going to get exposure to hundreds of jobs in a short time frame, right? Otherwise you're just, Oh, let's try this. Let's try that. So this particular assessment, 20 minutes to take 20 to 30 minutes max. Mm. Um, and what I liked about this particular assessment, um, cause a lot of assessments that the schools have and stuff are like, well, what would you do in this situation? What, or, you know, it's like, you know, look at this picture and tell us what you think, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> where this is just rank order, like out of all these statements, what do you like most? What do you like least, Mm -hmm. you know, type of thing. And what, so I, uh, so, and one of the theories, the Harrison assessment is based off of is the enjoyment performance theory, Mm -hmm. which states if your job contains at least 75% of what you naturally like to do, you'll be three times more successful. Mm -hmm. And so it in 20 minutes can help you find those, matches and what's so interesting like i was uh, doing one with a team the other day they scored high for a lot of hr-ish type jobs Mm -hmm. but guess what was also in their film director Mm. the kids like i never would have thought of myself what what is it about a film director you know so it it's such a why like you know i never would have thought of that let me learn more about that job Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, actually, uh, I had a parent, I worked with her team. She's like, oh, he wants to be a video game developer, but I just don't see it. <laughs> um, you know, I keep sitting playing video games all day. I just don't see it. Well, guess what? He scored high as a video <laughs> game developer and the mom, mom's like, all right. And now he's going to KSU majoring in video game design and wow. loving every minute of it. And I'll give you my own personal story because as parents, uh, you know, especially when your kid has no idea what they want to do, it's always like, 
well, you're good at this, you're good at that. Let's focus on jobs that you're good at. Mm -hmm. Well, just because you're good at it doesn't necessarily mean you want to do it. And my own personal story, my oldest, who's now 19, um, uh, you can take the assessment when you're a sophomore in high school. So, of course, I had to take it. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I bet you're going to score high as a teacher because you're so good with kids. Well, he scored like <laughs> almost zero. <laughs> and I was like, I don't get it. You're so good with kids. And he said, Mom, just because I'm good with kids doesn't mean I want to work with them 40 hours a week. And I'm like, huh, that's what I tell parents. <laughs> and, right. uh, you know. <laughs> So it, it's it's really about those tasks that you just really in every job. You know that's why it's seventy five percent. Every job's going to have things you don't like to do. It's just how much, right? And like you know, if I had taken the assessment, I you know I'm like, oh, I'm cause motivated. I'm a born fundraiser. If I had taken, while well, cause motivated is a portion of the job, it's a little bit out of the whole big scheme. And I probably never would have done fundraising if I had known that. Wow. My yeah. goodness. Wow, Lori, you've given us so many gems, so much, so many nuggets today. And folks, don't worry. We're going to have uh, <laughs> links in the show notes to what Lori is talking about. So don't you worry. <laughs> you will be able to reach out to her. <laughs> You know, Lori, this uh, upcoming school year, as is, is we're kind of at the end of July here, this is a, a very interesting return to school, especially coming off the last two years. You know, we talk about – everybody knows about what's going on, pandemic and other things in the media and all across society and wars across the world. But the kids kind of went through a lot um, over the last couple yeah. of years. Going into this upcoming – school year uh what are some things that are kind of near and dear to your heart talking with parents and students um i i just i think we're starting to get back to a sense of normalcy okay. you know um like in-person events this past year it's like some schools were doing it some still weren't mm -hmm. um and i, I think I think that's the biggest thing. I think we're all craving it. I know I am. You know, like, I want some things to go back the way they they were. And, and um, but if anything, one thing the pandemic did help parents realize is like, huh, I need to better, be paying better attention about my kid's future. Because, mm. you know, we were, we were ahead of, you know, we were, you know, with them 24 seven. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to, I, my son was one of those 20, 20 graduates that wow. missed out on a lot of different opportunities from 2021. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think, you know, getting more involved and, and helping and being part of the planning process. Cause I think as I think we, um, we expect our schools, especially public schools, you know, but guidance counselors, like I know at my son's school, it's like one guidance counselor for 400 students, oh you goodness. know, wow. and, and ultimately as parents, it's, it's our responsibility, right? It's not the school's responsibility. It's, it's our responsibility to, you know, help guide them to, to their best, to their, you know, to their purpose, mm -hmm. you know, because, I mean, as parents, what do we want? We want our kids to eventually want them to be financially, emotionally happy. Mm -hmm. That's our that's our end goal. And how can we help guide them to that? Wow. Well said, Lori. Well said. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, the things Lori's talking about, I'm, I'm not even in school and I don't have children yet, but she's got me excited <laughs> for the upcoming school year with some of the things she's sharing. Uh, Lori, just you've been such a joy to have on the show. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, but Lori, with all the impactful work that you're doing, what's the best way for people to reach out to you and connect with you? Yeah. Um, well, my website is myidealcollege.org, O-R-G, not .com. 
Um, you can go on there. Uh, I do have a freebie four steps, four camp fellow steps to get your kid into college. Um, if you're interested in that, um, but also reach out to me at Laurie at my ideal college, uh, dot org as well. So that's L A U R I E at my ideal college dot org. And I'm happy to, uh, you know, talk to you if you want to talk about your certain, um, uh, you know, if you have questions, if you're thinking about how do I help my teen on the right path, actually on my website, you can also I have a help me now button <laughs> where you can schedule some time to talk to me uh, and we can help that. Na- I can help you navigate this process. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lori. Folks, you know how to reach out to her. So reach out to her. <laughs> <laughs> Lori, I've had so much fun at this episode. I knew it was going to be just just the topic alone. I knew it was going to be great. And without a doubt, it was. So, Lori, I thank you for coming on the Jericho Force podcast. Really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, thank you. It's it's I, I get very I have a hard time not talking. Once I get started, I have a hard time not talking. So I just am so it's it, it's. It's easy, you know, with the right tools and information, we can get our teens to success without the heavy debt. Mm. Amen to that. Well, that's all we have time for today on the Jericho Force podcast. Uh, Make sure you uh, connect with Lori if you've got a kid that's getting ready to, to go to school or trying to understand what they're doing. She is your lady. But, folks, that wraps up this episode and you know how we leave things don't conform to the world's way of doing business transform by doing business god's way we'll see you next time on the jericho force podcast thank you for listening to the jericho force podcast You can catch us live on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time and on demand. Check out JerichoForce.com backslash podcast for more details. To learn how to live out your faith in the marketplace, grab a copy of Jason Davis's book, Fortify, Being Rooted in God's Plan for Work and Business, available on Amazon. You're listening to Jerichoforce Worldwide Podcast.